Hey, good evening. I'm really happy to have you here. My name is Daniel. I was a professional opera singer and beatboxer. And tonight we're going to be listening to Jeff Castellucci's cover of Big Iron. So I'm not quite sure if I've heard the original of this or not. Just in terms of, I'm more familiar with the music itself, not really song titles. But regardless, I think Jeff is an incredible vocalist and he's really mastered the art of being able to sing and harmonize with himself. So I'm really excited to jump into this and I hope you are as well. So without any further delay, let's just jump into it. To the town of our free, a road a stranger one fine day. Yeah. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. Well, no one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. But a stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip. A yeah. big iron on his hip. Well, it was early in the morning when he rode into Oh, what a groove. He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. He's an outlaw, listen, running, came the whisper from each lip. Then he's here to do some business with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. He's a stranger that rode into town one day. Some business than me on his way. Yeah. In this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men had tried to take him, and that many men were dead. He was vicious and a killer, though a youth of 24. And the notches on his pistol numbered one in 19 more. One in 19 more. Now the stranger started talking, made it plain to folks around. Was an Arizona Ranger, wouldn't be too long in town. He came here to take an outlaw back alive, or maybe dead. Ah! He said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red. Like the dust that's blowing through this border town. The storm and take old Texas down. Wasn't long before the story was related to Texas Red. Well, the outlaw didn't worry, but they tried before we're dead. Twenty men had tried to take him, twenty men had made a slip. Twenty one would be the ranger with the big iron on his head. Now the morning passed so quickly, it was time for them to leave. Ah. It was twenty past eleven when they walked out in the street. Folks were watching from the windows, everybody had their breath. They knew this handsome ranger was about to meet his death. About to meet his death. There was forty feet between them when they stopped to make their play. And the swiftness of the ranger is still talked about today. Texas Red had not cleared leather for a bullet fairly ripped. And the ranger's aim was deadly with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. Big iron. He's a stranger that rode into town one day. Then be on his way. Be gone. He will keep on rolling till his life is gone. It was over in a moment, and the folks had gathered round. There before them lay the body of the outlaw on the ground. Well, he might have gone on living, but he made one fatal slip when he tried to match the ranger with 
the big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, I got chills, dude. That was incredible. And yeah, I do remember hearing that tune, but it was such a long time ago that I hardly even remembered the tale of it. Yeah, like, oh, where do I begin with this? <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I want to comment on is this is definitely a piece that tells an entire story. It is story focused, and I really love these types of pieces. Not just because I really love storytelling, hence the name of the channel, Good Evening Stories, <laughs> but also in order to tell a story, you need to keep it constantly engaging. The momentum of the story in and of itself usually does a pretty good job of that, but when you make a story into a song, the song needs to be equally as engaging as the story. Otherwise, people are going to disengage with the music in and of itself and just focus on the lyrics. And even then, it might not be as captivating if they want to listen to really good music alongside having a really strong story. So something I really, really digged about Jeff's cover of this is the fact that he introduced new harmonies later on into the piece that weren't originally in the beginning of the piece, which I really loved. It keeps, it keeps the momentum not just of the story, but of the music consistent. And he keeps generating new musical ideas throughout the entirety of the piece, which I really, really dig. He didn't heavily rely on his bass register, even though he used his bass register, like the really deep aspects of his bass register, on occasion. He didn't rest on them or utilize them constantly throughout the entirety of the piece. He used them more or less as accents, and I really, really love that. And his harmonies with himself, oh my gosh. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but dude, <laughs> he's just so clean with it. And... His phrasing was really consistent, and it was so clean, and his control of the tempo changes, and how he doesn't just stop on a dime, but he slows very quickly, but it feels so gradual as well. Just in the sense that if you don't have a tremendous amount of time to slow down a tempo, but you also don't want to make it completely abrupt and just start on a new tempo, what Jeff does is he takes a really moderate to quick tempo or just pacing of the song and slows it down to the point of where he wants the piece to be, not just on a dime and starting in a new tempo. I really love the, just the gradual feeling. It doesn't feel like I'm being jerked around throughout the entirety of the song. It's just one consistent flow, just in terms of the tempo and even in terms of the dynamics where he has some really mezzo piano, mezzo forte segments and leans into more forte segments or medium soft to medium loud to loud segments. And everything just flowed really, really well. And he told the story very well as well. <laughs> and I understood everything he was saying. His diction was very clear. And on top of it, his voice just also fits the theme of this Western style very well as well, <laughs> yeah, let's just jump into this analysis. I'm really excited to break this down. <laughs> To the town of our free, a road a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. I love this. First, he uses consonants, the ending of consonants, to transition into the following cadence. Like, let's listen to this beginning again. Of our free, a road a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. All around him, didn't have. Using that M into didn't have. Yeah, that was really, really good. Because I've said this a lot on the channel before, where if you have an M and you close the vowel onto a consonant, but the sound itself doesn't end, therefore the musical momentum doesn't end, you're constantly writing that closed sound and structuring it into the next word, which in this case is didn't. So to have a closed sound and to immediately go into a didn't, I just really love how he holds on to that M, um, transitions into the D for didn't. Let's listen to that one more time. Hey, hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much yeah. to say. Well, no. 
And the beautiful thing about it too is that when he is in his deeper register, he doesn't use his vibrato a lot. He just allows this straight tone of this bass register to flow very seamlessly. But when he's more in the middle of his chest voice, where he has a lot more, not just control, but a lot stronger of breath manipulation and is able to spin it a lot easier. All of a sudden, there's this beautiful vibrato. So you have this beautiful straight tone in the space register. And then when he's in more of this upper register in his chest voice still, he's able to spin these notes a little bit more, add that really lovely natural vibrato he has. And it's so consistent. And it just, like I was mentioning, just the entire momentum and flow of this piece just works so well. Oh, the stranger one fine day. Yeah. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. Yeah. Well, no one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. But a stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip. A big iron on his hip. Well, it was early. And I love how gentle he touches on that P for hip. Just having that hip. And you feel the P and you hear the P, but it's more like a very gentle puff of air. And it's a really great way to not have something too dominating because you want the flow of the piece to still happen and having very crisp consonants might create a more jagged edge to the end of a cadence if we're just using visual imagery. And therefore just having something a little bit more soft, a little bit more rounded, just like that puff of air for a P instead of but having it's such a minor difference, but it's a world of difference in terms of the actual flow of the piece and the textures that his voice gives you. And that's one element as to why the piece is so satisfying and just moves the way it does. And ah, oh, I love it so much. For the stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip, a big iron on his hip. Well, it yeah. was early in the morning when he rode into the town. Oh, I love the way that the backup Jeffs come in, just with this really strong scoop into the note. Ooh, yeah, dude. It just adds to that laid back kind of groove, but because the, the percussion and the instruments and the leading vocal line have so much energy and momentum generating forward, that having this nice scoop, even though it's still in tempo, it has this relaxed feeling. So it's not as though you're stressed about constantly keeping up with the music because there's this very gentle background environment while you have this constant forward-facing momentum. It's like relaxing in comfort on a bullet train kind of thing. And it's really nice. I really love this this feeling, this environment that he's so expertly crafted. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town. Yeah! He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. And now I listen, running came the whisper from each lip. And he's here to do some business with a big iron on his hip. He just flows into his bass register so seamlessly. And he does this in all of his music. But just having, and a big iron on his hip. But obviously an octave lower. It just flows so well into that bass register. And you just don't hear that in a lot of musicians. And I love the way how he just so seamlessly does that. It's absolutely magnificent. It's one of the reasons why I love him so much as a vocalist, very unique in that way. The iron on his ah! He's a stranger that rode into town one day. Oh, just all of the Jeffs doing big iron. All of them moving so in sync with the rapidly moving notes on do, 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 do. And just being so in sync with each other. It's, it's Jeff's kiss, dude. It's, it's so well crafted. And on top of that, if you were actually listening to their hums as well, I've mentioned this before where when they're humming, it's not hmm where it's very directed through the bridge of the nose and all of the sound is concentrated into that direct energy. It's more like there's a golf ball lodged in the back of your throat and you just have this huge open space inside of your mouth to create a instead of 
and you feel your lips buzzing because there's so much vocalized air reverberating inside of your mouth. And it creates this very intense yet very hollow and broad type of hum. And especially when you have musical accompaniment on top of your voice doing that, it's really imperative that you have as big and as broad of a sound as possible in this style of music. And he doesn't let that slip his mind and commits to that really big open space. And I love that. Let's listen to that again. The big iron on his head. The big iron on his head. He's a stranger that rode into town one day. Oh, I didn't even notice that. He went from an ooh into that open spaced hum. Mm. And that was really cool. Let's let's actually watch all of the other jabs again. That rode into town one day. Yeah. Ah. Here to ah. some business than me. And their cutoffs are so clean. In this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men have tried to take him, and that many men were dead. He just has so much control over his voice. It's I'm just so transfixed at how he has so much control, not just of his deep bass register, but in his mix of his chest and head voice, just having da da na 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 instead of where it's much more deep and grounded, where I feel he'd have much more power and control, but he has so much control in his mix and in his just general head voice as much as he does in his chest voice. And he's such an outstanding musician. I love listening to him. In this town there lives an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. And I love these. It sounds like somebody's playing a gamelan, which is a giant metal tube instrument, essentially, where you just hit it and it creates that gong bell ringing effect. And it's a beautiful instrument when played well. <laughs> but I just love all of these different accents that he's using to really create the tonal center of this piece. Outside of just the Jeffs, the entire arrangement itself is so well done. And there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men have tried to take him, and that many men were dead. He was vicious. Nice solid D on that too, but it, it feels like the P as well, where it's dead. And you feel the D, you hear the D, but it's so gentle because it allows the rest of the cadence to flow, and it's so nice, dude. Him and that many men were dead. He was vicious yeah. and a killer, though a youth of 24. And the notches. His cutoffs are so consistent, and ending a word on R can be very dangerous because it can muddle the sound. The sound can feel a little murred in that way of, of 24. But just rounding it like he was with all of the other consonants where it's 24 and you still get the R, but it's very rounded and it allows that same flow-like texture with the B, with the P, with the D, with, in this case, the R and just rounding it out to 24 and you just feel the R just lead into the next cadence. Like, obviously there's a breath, but the breaths just feel so energized that it doesn't feel like he's losing any of that momentum. It's just, you finish the drop on the roller coaster and you're ready to glide back up again. It's just so wave-like and I love that. He was vicious and a killer though, a youth of 24. And the notches yeah. on his pistol numbered one in 19 more, whoa, whoa, whoa. one in 19. One in 19 more, whoa, whoa. Just using the more and transitioning that into the next, oh, 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 the next transitionary period. However brief it is, it's just, everything is just so fluid and it's smooth. And that's also reflected in the imagery of the storytelling happening behind the Jeffs. Everything is just so good, dude. It's all working. Like every element of this video is just tantamount to each other. Everything is working so well in tandem and it's just so nice. Notches on his pistol numbered one in 19 more. One in 19 more. Ah. 
Great now harmonies. The strangers started talking, made it plain to folks around. Was an Arizona Woo. Ranger, wouldn't be too long in town. He came here to take an hour back alive, or maybe dead. And he said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red. Oh, I love the transition right into the chorus. Not really even a moment of instrumental break. Just immediately into this section. After Texas Red Yeah! Like the dust that's blowing through this border town. Yeah. He will chase the storm and take old Texas down. These harmonies right here, incredible, incredible bass line, leading line, tenor line, baritone line, everything just coming together so well into these beautiful, very crisp harmonies. But the song is just flowing and the consonants aren't too hard, but uh, it's just, you get these, how, how do I, how do I describe this? It's like the most perfect piece of fried chicken. <laughs> And hear me out on this. You have this beautiful, crispy texture on the outside where that crispiness is reflective of the incredibly tight and well-refined harmonies of the piece. And then when you sink your teeth into it and you just taste this beautifully tender, perfectly cooked chicken on the inside, so moist and juicy, and that's the flow of the piece. That's the consonant and vowel manipulation. That's where the breath lies. That's the overall musical structure of the piece. And swallowing it in your gullet <laughs> is his natural timbre. It's the taste of the chicken in and of itself. It's him as a musician that makes every element of this chicken, the taste, the texture, the sensation, the feelings you get when eating it. It's just everything comes together for this most perfect piece of fried chicken. <laughs> I hope you can understand my crazy metaphor. But every element of it is just so well refined. I love it. Not a detail went unnoticed. Be the ranger with the Nice now cut the morning pass so quickly, it was time for them to be. Ooh, love that sound he had there. Let's listen to that one more time. Now the morning pass so quickly, it was time for them to be. Yeah. It was 20 past 11 when they walked out in the street. Folks were watching from the windows, everybody had their breath. They knew this hands Even on a TH, and the TH can linger because there could possibly be no end to a th sound. But it was so clean. These cutoffs are so clean. It's absolutely incredible. Every single one. So well produced. Folks were watching from the windows, everybody had their breath. They knew yeah. this handsome ranger was about to meet his death. About to meet his death. There was 40 feet between them when Yeah, and it, this is what I was mentioning in the initial post reaction where we went from this more upbeat, moderate tempo energy into this more slow dynamic or into this more slow tempo. But it didn't feel like it was just cut and now we're in a new tempo. There was a beautiful transition, even though it was relatively quick. Let's listen to it one more time. Ranger was about to be his death, about to be his there was 40 feet between yeah it's just it just flowed so seamlessly into this new into this new tempo and ah uh, it's just chef's kiss dude there was 40 feet between them when they stopped to make their play and the swiftness of the ranger is still talked about today Texas red had not cleared leather for a bullet fairly ripped. And the ranger's aim was deadly with a big iron on his head. 
Oh my gosh, his voice just gives me so many chills. Just in terms of, he has this beautiful vibrato in his mix. And then when we go back into the leading center Jeff, where his consonants are so crisp and there's, and his breath is just so invigorated with so much energy, even in this slower tempo. And there's just still this intense, robust energy and sound quality to his voice that just, ah. Uh, tugs at your heartstrings, dude. And it's not even a connection directly to the story in and of itself, even though it could be. It's just more of the way, the fashion that he is singing and delivering this type of music. It's really remarkable. And also something I didn't comment on is when the tempo changed and just having that that wind effect, that was a really good way to slow down the tempo too, because that sound creates this beautiful white noise to distract you from the tempo change. So it does create this feeling of almost wind resistance to slow you down in that way, which is a really great stylistic choice in terms of actually slowing down the tempo. Really well done there. And the sound itself fits so naturally in this theme of music. Texas. Yeah. There was 40 feet between them when they stopped to make their play. Yeah. And the swiftness of the ranger is still talked about today. Texas red had not cleared leather for a bullet fairly ripped. And the ranger's aim was deadly with a big iron on his head. Big iron on his head. Big iron. Ah! He's a stranger that rode into town one day. Big Here to ah. do some business, then be on his way. Big and this is also what I was mentioning earlier, where he keeps the music in and of itself so interesting because we haven't heard this chord progression yet in the song and we're so far into the song. And because we haven't heard it, it's just so captivating. And just his chordal progression in terms of the entire musical cadence in and of itself is so interesting and audibly satisfying and pleasing to our ears. Like, let's listen to that entire sequence again. <laughs> Here to do some business, then be on his way. Big Yeah! He will keep on rolling till his life is gone. It was over in a moment and the folks had gathered around. Just a beautiful transition into this new tempo again. It just flowed so seamlessly. Over in a moment and the folks had gathered around. There before them lay yeah. the body of the outlaw on the ground. Well, he might have gone on living, but he made one fatal slip. When he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. Ugh. Beautiful. Incredible. What an arrangement. What an execution. Dude, that was just so stellar. So many incredible elements of that piece between the visual storytelling and the actual arrangement, the actual execution, the accompaniment, the effects, everything just worked so seamlessly to create another wonderful Jeff masterpiece. And honestly, man, what a remarkable musician. I, I can listen to his voice all day. Jeff, if you're watching this, man, great job, brother. That was, oh my gosh. Every aspect of that piece, honestly, every single aspect of it, every element, I really think fit within the tonal center of the piece, the thematic center of the piece, and it was just so well executed. From a musician standpoint, from a highly analytical standpoint, it was just so well done. And just from someone who wouldn't even have a level of musical technical analysis comprehension, let's say. I just think it's just a very satisfying piece in and of itself. 
even if I didn't understand what all of the elements were that made me love it, I know that I love it regardless. I might not understand every element that goes into making the perfect piece of fried chicken, going back to that metaphor, but man, dude, it doesn't mean that I can't appreciate everything about it for what it is. And honestly, brother, thank you for that. That was freaking awesome. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. If y'all liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you didn't like it, please leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments below. I do read all of the comments, even if I may not hard a reply to all of them. So please just know that your comments do not go unnoticed and I do take them into further consideration as I make future videos. My Patreon is really close to being completed. I just need to make content for the final tier and it should be launched very soon. And I really appreciate your patience in this regard. My live streams are currently Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So feel free to stop by, say hey, ask me any questions about myself or the channel, or just talk about anything that you guys would like to talk about, and I will absolutely be there for you guys. I also leave all of the live streams up on YouTube, so feel free to check those out at your leisure. I can't begin to describe enough how much your continued support and continued watching of these videos means to me. I really do appreciate everything that you guys have told me, and it really does mean a lot to me, so thank you. And I can't wait to see all of you in the next video. Have a great rest of your evening, everyone.